All right, class, um, good morning. Um, now, um, this is your first lecture for the contemporary world class. Um, every time uh, we finish a lecture, I will post something in your Google Classroom that will help you remember what happened in the lecture and these are succeeding points. So, um, it's just my PowerPoint with my voice in it. So, you better listen. Um, I'm not the best speaker around, as I really know, but you have to listen every time. We have this. Uh, and just if you have further questions, then you can ask me personally, or you can leave a like and comment below, or in a Google Classroom. As long as we can ask me if you have some, if you need some clarifications. So now um, this is chapter one. The nature of globalization is an introduction of what's about gonna happen um, all throughout this course because globalization is the main theme of the contemporary world. That we need to talk about because we are already part of it. <laughs> okay, um, if you remember uh, correctly, we had a first activity um, before I formally start the lecture to you guys. It's about you talk about areas like business, uh, pop culture, um, health, economics, politics, environment, and you, you, you have a lot of topics to talk about there. And a lot of you were mentioning like what happened to Jay Dean, what happened to this coronavirus out outbreak, now on evening, the volcano eruption, the wildfire in um, in Australia. All of these things uh, we are talking about. And um, here we're formally. What is globalization? Um, globalization um, changes uh, the way it interacts. So that um, before before we define what is globalization. In order for us to understand the concept, we need to, to know the effects first before we interact, people interact by, you know, the actual interactions, physical um, presence. We interact by talking, walking, going to the cheap, asking how, your, how is your day. Now, because of globalization, technology changes the way we interact. After this, uh, the invention of uh, the telephone, we can now communicate with each other even in further distances. Then the invention of the advent of the cell phone, even without wires, we can communicate with each other. And after which we have all of this um, internet connectivity, we can now also communicate through chat. Before it was very difficult, it was just a letter and pen pal. Now we can you can send messages through your fingertips. And now, through this, after the iPhone was invented, you can now text and chat at the same time call someone. Uh, and you can even see someone abroad. It's all because it's possible because of the internet. And the world is getting smaller because of it. And this is one effect of globalization that we are able to see and interact with each other because of technology. And globalization in the Philippines started with Fidel Ramos. And you know this guy, our president before. Kenesia. Okay. Fidel Ramos, he liberalized trade. Uh, when I say liberalized trade, he meant to, there's a lot of privatization. Like, for example, Philippine Airlines, um, it was the monopoly at that time. Silaragi uh, airline carrier before. Now, because of Fidel Ramos, because of the laws he signed, nanay something like Cebu Pacific, nanay mga promo fares, and a lot of people can afford going from one place to another. Pwede na sila makasakay aeroplano, like everyone can fly. And uh, that's one way, um, that's one of the effects of globalization after Fidel Ramos. Nagdagka na kay wa kompanya, na dili na nila monopolize, and if there is so much competition in the market, then um, there's a there's there will be a lot of options for people to choose from. So na pal ragi wak ka choice. And ang pal kay monopolize nila mas magamahal ang priti. Wala may mahimo mas matao. Now that there are budget friendly na mga airlines like Cebu Pacific, Air Asia, Cathay Pacific, sa pa what else whatsoever. Ang mga tao there are no people can go from one place to another. Nalilak kasi lamang katulad ng lugar. Besides, uh, Manila is just like an hour before it takes a days for the ship to come there. And oh, of course, one monopoly we have is PLDT. Yeah. Before it's the only way to communicate. Now, 
uh, because of changing technology and that we can communicate wirelessly. We have all these companies, Smart, Globe, Sun, and PLDT no longer has a stronghold na kanang na dito na nausab gid uh, sila sa kuan na wahi sila sa race and now communicating through telephone is no longer the norm then uh, communicating through cell phone is normal now and uh, communication is increasing because of the availability of this uh, technological advances um, also because of liberalization of trade a multinational corporation and transnational corporations uh, they emerge in sila many mga companies na known everywhere in the world and I think you can guess in the logo uh, when during the class I think you mentioned all of this for example 7-eleven is a job is a company from Japan and now it's here this one Facebook is very familiar of course all of us are using this what is this of course McDonald's is a uh, it's a transnational company mm -hmm. Starbucks, Toyota, Toyota, <laughs> Louis Vuitton, Microsoft, and of course this one, which a lot of post millennials are familiar to, Muntun, the the technology company of you know your favorite game, the Mobile Legends. And um, we will be talking about uh, the effect of globalization to world politics. So what is globalization again? And according to Manfred Stegger, it refers to the expansion and intensification of social relations and consciousness across world time and world space. So uh, for example, Apple is an American company. And sometimes these uh, companies are very powerful to the extent that they are more valuable. Um, their GDP is higher compared to nation states. Um, in 2016, Apple earned mo about two, uh, 229 point and 229,234 million dollars. Comparing it to Portugal, it's only uh, the GDP of Portugal is only 205 and 269 million. Do you think the Philippines uh, has bigger income than Apple? Yes, we have bigger GDP, according to the Business Insider. It's on 304, 900 uh, million um, dollars. But uh, you compare it to the income of Apple, Apple earns more than margin. Like, maguwang na silag mga 70 million. And that's only one company of the US. And for the whole country of the Philippines, more than it to come up 309 uh, 349 million so ang transnational companies and because they earn so much even more than countries it's their presence of transnational and multi companies like apple is very threatening for nation states and now to compete against uh, multinational companies and transnational companies, nation states firm, uh, form regional and economic alliances. Uh, for example, the European Union, the Himonas, Lambert, Dimanes, because if you cannot join them, then uh, you cannot beat them, join them. So, among nation states, nagsigit na himos lang mga regional alliances para dili sila mapildi ang mga dagko kay ng mga kompanya sa kalibutan. And then, example is European Union. The, the Middle East or the Arab Union of Arab countries, it was the Middle East, the Pan African Union, uh, the nation states in Africa, the South American Union, this one, the ASEAN Union, uh, which our Philippines is part of. And another um, regional alliance that we are also part of is the APEC, the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. So the ASEAN region, uh, we are part of the Philippines. Surprisingly, you didn't know that we are also part of the original members of the ASEAN region. The Philippines, Malaysia, and then uh, Singapore, Thailand. And after uh, several, and now the ASEAN regions is composed of these different countries. And we have also two observing states, um, East Timor and here in the other one, um, Papua New Guinea. 
And there are two purposes here, to accelerate economic growth, social progress, and cultural development. And also to promote peace and stability in the, um, in the region. And just because we are already connected of the ASEAN region, if you can remember correctly, there was this issue the Sultan of Sulu uh, insists that they have land in the Saba region, uh, which is the part of northern Borneo. However, the president at that time, when when there are forces that try to rehabilitate um, here in this in the you know this war zone region of Mindanao, Noy Noy Aquino, Binigno Aquino, did not. Well, any such an issue, okay? Malaysia is a close ally, and if ever gonna move insist on claims of Saba, what do we think will happen to the peace and stability of our region? So this is an effect of globalization because we 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 don't want to destroy all these economic alliances. That that's why we need to settle matters amicably and peaceful peacefully. So dili po dinaw gira na yun anana. And the, the ASEAN uh, Union is mitigating all the circumstances to, you know, to happen. And our treaty and amity corporations, according to yeah, the mutual respect, our independence, our sovereignty, um, equality, territorial rights, and national in, and identity to all nations. And the right of every state to lead its national existence free from external interference, submersion, and coercion. The interference of internal affairs is of one another. Munang, kuna ay give na may tabo dere na conflict, kung rebellion, for example, dili pa gin na sila kani Malaysia, Thailand, dili ni sila pwede mag intervene. And settlement of differences in a peaceful manner. So dili pwede na, na na gipot sit nga ay na invade sa sa kalugar, and then basra po tayo na kuan, magubot kayo. And renunciation of threat or force. And effective cooperation. So, we are in the dawn of the dawn age of ASEAN integration. So, one of the things we need to to look forward is cooperation with its, with these countries. And um, the ASEAN is just an offshoot of this whole globalization thing that happened. Of course, and now we also talk just an introduction about what's the effects of um, world globalization to world economics in um, if you go back here if you go back in traditional trade kinahanglan ka mo trade o mo ka now now in high frequency trading you don't need to go to that particular place and meet with a buyer and seller you can also you can travel elsewhere in the world this is made possible because of technology now we also need to talk about global economic organizations uh, for example the world bank the international monetary fund or the imf and the world trade organizations um and purpose and nila these geos they help in financing the economy True loans. Ile pautangon nila ang mga nation states. That the clients of these GEOs are nation states, mga countries like ours. However, you can a state can only loan from GEOs if the nation states agree with the terms and conditions. Um, kinahanglan mo part ka sa World Trade Organization para dili ka makaut para makautang ka ni nila. Pero kung dili ka mo kung mo apel ka ani, you have to you have to agree with all these conditions. And uh, na may mga free trade agreements, pwede sila mo ato si munasod, na walay tax, pwede, na may mga tax holidays, uh, pwede sila makara, you can ignore and immune of all these environmental laws. Okay, it's more money agreement na part sa World Trade Organizations. And um, maglibog ka kay, um, is this really helping countries? Kay mo finance man sila na to? Or is this a way for major countries, for rich countries to control uh, world politics and economics. Just hold this thought because um, this is one very important theme we are talking about in this contemporary world subject. Also, as part of the introduction, we should also talk about globalization in relation to culture and communication. Uh, globalization changes the way people in, we live in the world. Before. Um, Kaonta, matotag, usa ka karinderiya, at nung makaon, puro rigid native food. Now, we have all these things. 
Opa Chicken, it tastes, it's very, very good. It's something na makita na natin sa Pilipinas ron. But Opa Chicken, um, it's not possible without globalization. Even, uh, this is on, this should be existing dito ron sa Korea. Pero nabot na diri. It's because of globalization. And it's because of globalization, there's a lot of cultural like, changes. Na usabusa na po the concept. And let's take food, for example. The spaghetti, the pasta itself, and it is an invention. Kasi una na gunoon na ni ang mga Italians. Mga Italians may una na gluto sa spaghetti. But because of this concept, we have our own spaghetti, this juicy, sweet and sour and savory, sweet and savory na spaghetti, Filipino spaghetti. Na, and we have hot dogs and cheese as part of the ingredient and it's part then you know spaghetti is globalized now it's a globalized dish another example an italian uh, cuisine in Ita italian authentic italian pizza i um, mean because this concept na natay dai do butang ng toppings and cheese and um, tomato sauce the adoption in elsewhere in the world we have now this hawaiian pizza na butang pineapple and all of these uh, changes is possible because of globalization nag share share the concepts and it changes the way the world works now also um in globalization it, uh we also change the way we communicate before if we with an ofw goes to another country the only means of communication is through pen pal can send the letters and it takes months and years to communicate and then with the advent of the wireless communication, the cell phones, na na mga long distance na mga ako ane mahal ka ayo apa ko pangyunikate. Mo na posible ka ayo na mga OFW dito sa gawas mangita kabit. Now dali ra kay masakpan kay because of the internet, people can communicate through video chat. And then makamonitor na ang mga pamilya dito sa Pilipinas at to sa ilang mga kuan terbahan tisa gawas. Dali na kayo masakpan kung naailain kay paspas na kayong kumilik, paspas na kayo ang historia mga butiri, it's because of the internet. And the internet would not be possible without globalization. And this is one thing we need to investigate in this class, the contemporary world. This is now part of reality that technology is making possible. And it changed the idea of one country. The idea of democracy, for example, ni katag ni siya else over the world. Before Middle Eastern countries, they live in a sultanate, and then it's a dictatorship. It's not really a dictatorship. Basa kay kung ang ang labaw ng makagagahom, kotor gin ang mga sultan. And now in the Arab Spring, na usa ka country na, oi, they can overthrow this dictator like Gaddafi. And now in Syria, si mo kisay kila mo kasi pangan basa kay katosila. Ilang gi overthrow in leader, and then ikatag in the rest of the Arab Spring ang kaning the idea of democracy, and because of globalization and the idea of how should nation states should behave and should be governed, ni katag na elsewhere in the world, including countries which without democracy. This is one effect of globalization. Now you have emerging democracies in Egypt, in Tunisia, and in Syria. And our world is shrinking. Nagagamay ko na tong kalibutan. Matod pa ni ano magluhan. We live now in a global village. Before, like for example, before the Otaku communities is only limited to their own rooms. Nisla mga hadlok sila mga was. Kay amay mga yung mga tao na weird man siya tawhan na. Oi kaya nang alus kaya alus si Sir Rom Pirmi kaya nang enjoy sa anime. But because of the internet. Um, these people already have a community of their own. They, they can call their own. They can meet and then they can talk about their, their shared interest. And uh, it's also the same thing with gamers, for example. Before, their world is isolated within the confines of their rooms. Karun, pwede na sila maka elsewhere. And then, you know, smart is cool now. And you're a cool geek. And it's, it's one effect of globalization. And if you look at Facebook, there is always a Facebook group for every um, interest, for every shared interest. There's a group for pet lovers, there's a group for um, you know, uh, political groups, um, there's a group for uh, environmental warriors, eco warriors. And now it changes the way the world thinks now uh, because of, of, of connectivity and, or, and globalization. And also, we one important key important concept 
of globalization as cultural um, imperialism. If you remember during the class, I asked you the question, what is the most uh, popular sport in the world? Kung sa may pinakasikat na sport or duwa sa kalibutan, ang inyong gitubag, basketball. But unfortunately for you, it's not basketball, it is football. Football is the number one sport in the world. It is the most popular. When the World Cup, it takes uh, it takes the Olympics for to come up with a certain level. The country sport in April, that the World Cup mismo, the FIFA World Cup, is as, somehow the same level as the Olympics. However, if you are here, it's basketball. It's not man, basketball. It's because we are so much influenced with the, with the cultural imperialism in the U.S. Na bahalag ang Pilipinas kaya sa nato itong average height is putot ka ayo duwa ang gihapon tag basketball because we are so much influenced by the Americans and that effect of your sport the being the Americas as the dom dominating community maputris Pilipinas this is a mark of cultural relativism wala siya ipasabot sa cultural very influenced kita sa Americans now in various forms and uh, connectivity brought Globalization. Uh, these are examples of issues that uh, may affect us. The global recession in the U.S. last 2008, as good lang sa kanang real estate market, the burst and bubble, kaya nas lagi pa utang na mga tao para makapalit ng balay, pero dili sila makabayad sa utang. And then, ni the domino effect, ni gamay ang employment, ni guba ang kuan, ang J.P. Morgan, nagkubabo sa nagkubabo sa Wall Street ang kanang an uh, economic downfall and then because the US is the biggest economy and a lot of countries are depending to the US then apektado ang dibuk kalibutan apektuhan ta ang ilang financial issue na naronta sa US abot ta sa tua it's the same thing with the ancient um, Asian financial crisis na sugo sa Thailand ang problema and then the, because we are um, connected to each other economically and then also problema sa Thailand apektado ang Indonesia ang South Korea Malaysia hasta ta apil puta Pitatuta sa Asian financial crisis. And this is one effect of globalization, one negative effect. Kung ang problema sa gawas, maapektado ta. And also this one. This is another effect of globalization. If you can, can you recognize this poster? This one? Before, you cannot recognize this. But this is actually the album of Sai. Um, Kano nakanta sa kwan ba? O Pagandam style. Before a Pagandam style happened, Dili kay sikat na daan si Sai sa, sa Korea. But he was never a global phenomenon, a global sensation without um, YouTube. And it's even more uh, relevant today, mas, mas relatable siya karon because of, he's using some English words like, Hey, sexy lady, sikat na siya mayo. Without YouTube, without um, all this um, tech globalization, uh, without these technological platforms that will propagate global. Uh, that will propagate globalization. Dili nim si kasi sa isa tibu kalibutan. Now, um, connectivity also in politics. Sa kung giingot ng ganiha, the spread of the idea of democracy, we can also see it here. Uh, na, nag, nag revolt ito sa usaka lugar sa Middle East, and then um, nag democracy na sila. And then, it, nikatag ang idea sa democracy and politics um, before all of these countries are under dictatorships but since uh, nag, nag revolt there is Egypt sa Tunisia there is Syria uh, the rest of the Arab world nagsigin na sila o kuan na ni ilang na ilang na nagi entertain ang idea sa democracy they are now challenging their their present leaders and the nakatag na ang koan, nakatag na idea of democracy and politics and political structure diri sa Arab Spring. From here, from Mauritania, Western Sahara, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Lib even Libya and Gaddafi na koan, na gitapul down nila. And then Syria, Sudan, and um, Jordan, Syria, Assyria, Jordan, Iraq, and then uh, Kuwait, Bahrain. Yemen, Oman, Yemen, and then uh, Saudi Arabia na, na challenge na ikatag ang idea of politics uh, in democratic politics from the rest of the Arab world and it, this is all possible because of globalization 
And also, um, it's not only the negative effect na maguba ang magoberno, and then uh, we have all these uh, issues abroad na makatag sa rest of the world. There are also good effects of globalization, most especially the emerging the emergence of all these NGOs or not non-government organizations like the UN. And under the UN, there are a lot of NGOs like UNICEF uh, in charge for children, UNESCO in charge for heritage sites, and all these other and all these other partners that will help. And a good effect of, um, para maka-relate mo sa good effects sa NGO, is this um, relief during disaster, like when when Typhoon Haiyan, international name, or our own Bagyong Yolanda, maabot tiris kalibutan, the rest of the world are helping us. And this is only possible because of globalization, kay connected na matatanan, and because we shared a common humanity, and the other people from other nations feel this misery that we, that fall upon us during the during the brink of uh, when when Yolanda the typhoon Haiyan um, went to our shores devastated um, every community along its path and uh, kung dili uwang wala globalization kaning kanang kaning kanang mga relief goods dili ni mabot sa tunasod and everything is fast now because of technology pas pas na kayo because of this all interconnected satellite na mga technology Dadali na kita communicate from one just America until now instant ang ato ang communication. Wala na ilaglag and it will become faster later on magka develop a technology. And we have more areas to explore like virtual reality, augmented reality. And you can only know what the future can bring because of these things. Because all of ideas are connected now with globalization and even development of technology itself. Uh, is something that will surprise us later on. So in a nutshell, uh, in a contemporary world, we should be using a lot of perspectives. Economics, politics, culture, and technology. And this is, the, we should be talking about a lot of things. Because uh, we need to use our scientific and creative imaginations so that we can go beyond as one humanity, as one human uh, race, uh, we can extend our horizons beyond the stars and that's globalization as we introduce here that we should remember always that we are connected together all of us so that's the end of our lecture and i'll see you on the next lecture